Welcome to Drive TV, truck enthusiasts, to a journey through the automotive history. Uh, O'Day, we're delving into the rugged world of 1970s pickup trucks. From lackluster performance to questionable design choices, these trucks have earned their spots on our list of the 10 worst pickups from the era. Join us as we explore the highs and lows of 1970s pickup truck culture and uncover the stories behind these forgotten rides. Stay tuned for the unveiling of the 10 worst pickup trucks from the 1970s. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. The AMC Matador Cooper Utility, produced from 1971 to 1978, was an unconventional vehicle that attempted to combine the styling elements of a cupe with the utility of a pickup truck. It was essentially a variant of the AMC Matador, a mid-sized car produced by American Motors Corporation. Because the key features and aspects of the AMC Matador Cooper uh, design of the Matador Coupe Utility was unique for its time. It featured a sleek coupe style body with a shortened rear section where a small cargo bed was integrated. Despite its coupe like appearance, the Matador Coupe Utility retained some utility features typical of pickup trucks. Uh, the cargo bed, though small, provided some hauling capability for lighter loads. The top rear Coupe Utility did not enjoy Lions widespread popularity or commercial success. Its unconventional design may have contributed to its limited appeal among consumers who are more accustomed to traditional pickup truck configurations. And the Matador Coupe utility was available in different trim levels and engine options, similar to the regular Matador lineup. They could be equipped with various engines, um, including inline six and eight options. Uh, pretty sure the Matador Coupe utility ceased in 1978 after a relatively short production run. Its niche design, and limited market demand likely played a role in its discontinuation. Collectibles. Um, despite its rarity and unconventional design, the Matador Coupe utility is not widely sought after by collectors. However, its uniqueness and association with the AMC brand make it an interesting piece of automotive history. Overall, the AMC Matador Coupe utility stands out as a distinctive example of automotive experimentation from the 1970s, blending elements of both coupes and pickup trucks in a single vehicle. However, its lack of commercial success ultimately led to its discontinuation. The Ford Pinto pickup, produced from 1971 to 1980, was a compact pickup truck variant based on the Ford Pinto subcompact car. It was designed to appeal to consumers seeking a smaller, more fuel-efficient option for light-duty hauling and transportation needs. Here's more information about the Ford pickup was essentially a modified version of the Ford Pinto sedan. The rear portion of the Pinto's body was replaced with a small cargo bed transforming it into a pickup truck configuration. This conversion allowed Ford to offer a compact pickup option without the need for significant redesign or engineering. Engine options. Similar to the Ford Pinto sedan, the pickup version was available with a range of engine options. These included economical inline four engines as well as more powerful inline six engines. While not known for their performance, these engines provided adequate power for the Pinto pickups intended purposes. You tend to pick up offered modest hauling capabilities suitable for light duty tasks, such as transporting small loads, equipment, or supplies. The compact size of the truck made it maneuverable and easy to park, appealing to urban and suburban drivers with limited space. Uh, one of the most notorious aspects of the Ford Pinto, both the sedan and the pickup variant, was its safety record. The Pinto gained notoriety for its susceptibility to fuel tank ruptures and fires in rear end collisions. This safety issue tarnished the reputation of the Pinto and led to significant controversy and legal battles for Ford. Discontinue, despite initial popularity and sales success, the Ford Penta pickup, along with the entire Penta lineup, was discontinued in 1980. At this time, safety concerns and changing consumer preferences had contributed to a decline in demand for the model. Collectability. While not particularly sought after by collectors, the Ford Pinto pickup holds historical significance as part of Ford's lineup during the 1970s. Its association with the larger controversy surrounding the safety of the Pinto adds to its historical context within the automotive industry. Chevrolet Love A light utility vehicle was a compact pickup truck produced by Isuzu and sold under the Chevrolet badge in the United States from 1972 to 1982. Uh, it was one of the early entrants into the compact pickup truck segment and offered consumers a smaller, more fuel-efficient alternative to larger trucks. The Chevrolet Louvre was based on the Isuzu Faster um, compact pickup truck produced by Isuzu Motors in Japan. Isuzu entered into a partnership with General Motors Gen, which resulted in the rebadged Isuzu Faster being sold as the Chevrolet Love 
in the United States. The Louvre initially offered with a choice of gasoline engines, including a 1.8 liter inline four and later a 2.0 liter inline four engine. These engines provided adequate power for the Louvre's use size and intended use as a light duty truck. Despite its compact size, the Chevrolet Louvre offered a practical cargo bed for hauling small loads, making it suitable for light duty tasks such as transporting goods, equipment, or recreational gear. The, uh, the truck size also made it maneuverable and easy to park, appealing to urban and suburban drivers. Popularity, the Chevrolet love gained popularity during the 1970s, particularly amid the oil crisis when consumers sought more fuel efficient vehicles. Its compact size and relatively economical operation made it a practical choice for budget conscious buyers. Durability, the love was known for its durability and reliability, qualities that contributed to its long-term success in the market. Many owners appreciated its simplicity and ruggedness, which made it well-suited for both work and everyday driving. Discontinua. Production of the Chevrolet Love ended in 1982 as GM shifted its focus to newer truck models. The Love was eventually replaced by the Chevrolet S10 uh, compact pickup truck developed entirely by GM. Now the Chevrolet Louvre is no longer in production. It holds a place in automotive history as one of the early pioneers of the compact pickup truck segment. Its success helped pave the way for future compact trucks and contributed to the popularity of small trucks in the United States. Uh, overall, the Chevrolet Louvre remains a fondly remembered vehicle among enthusiasts and owners who appreciated its practicality, durability, and economical operation during its time in production. Uh, the Datsun 620 was a compact pickup truck produced by Nissan under the Datsun brand from 1972 to 1979. It was the successor to the Datsun 520 and was part of the Datsun 600 series of vehicles. The Datsun 620 gained popularity for its ruggedness, reliability, uh, and distinctive styling. Some Kia dot the Datsun 620 featured a modern and angular design for its time with a squared off front end and a distinctive profile. Its design was influenced by the aesthetic trends of the 1970s with sharp lines and geometric shapes. The truck was available in both regular and long bed configurations. Engine options? The Datsun 6 and 20 was offered with a range of engine options depending on the market. In the United States, it was initially equipped with a 1.6 liter inline four engine, which was later upgraded to a 1.8 liter inline four. Other markets also had diesel engine options available. The Datsun 62020 was well received by consumers and gained a reputation for reliability and durability. Um, its popularity helped establish Datsun action as a, a major player in the compact truck segment, competing its offerings from Toyota, Ford, and Chevrolet. Enthusiasts appreciated the Datsun 620 for its modifiability and aftermarket support. Owners often customized their trucks with various upgrades and modifications, including lift kits, wheels, and performance enhancements. Production of the Datsun 620 ended in 1979 when it was replaced by the Datsun 720. The newer model featured updated styling and improved features, but retained the compact size and practicality of its predecessor. The Datsun 620 remains a beloved classic among truck enthusiasts and collectors. Its enduring popularity has led to a dedicated community of owners and enthusiasts who continue to maintain, restore, and modify these trucks. Overall, the Datsun 620 played a significant role in establishing Datsun Nissan as a major player in the compact truck market. Its combination of ruggedness, reliability, and distinctive styling has earned it a place in automotive history as an iconic and influential pickup truck. Her career, produced from 1972 to 1982, faced several challenges that contributed to its lack of significant success in the marketplace. Competition from Japanese imports. The Ford Courier faced stiff competition from compact pickup trucks imported from Japan, particularly from brands like Toyota and Datsun Lysen. These Japanese trucks offered similar or better fuel efficiency, reliability, and affordability compared to the Ford Courier, leading many consumers to opt for Japanese brands instead. The Ford Courier initially offered only one engine option, a small inline four engine. This engine lacked the power and performance compared to some of its competitors, especially as the demand for more powerful engines increased in the 1970s and early 1980s. While the Ford Courier was generally regarded as reliable, it faced some issues with durability and build quality. Some owners reported rust problems and mechanical issues, which may have affected the truck's reputation and deterred 
potential buyers. The Ford Courier did not undergo significant updates or innovations during its production run. While competitors introduced new features and improvements to their trucks, the Courier remained relatively unchanged, making it less appealing to consumers looking for the latest advancements in technology and design. Free out 1970s and early 1980s, uh, there was a shift in consumer preferences towards larger vehicles, including full-size pickup trucks and SUVs. A compact truck market became increasingly competitive and the Ford Courier struggled to maintain its market share amidst changing consumer trends. Brand per sex. Uh, Ford's reputation for producing reliable trucks with its F-Series lineup may have overshadowed the Courier's appeal. Uh, some consumers may have preferred to stick with Ford's larger trucks, perceiving them to be more capable uh, and durable than the smaller Courier. Ultimately, Ford made the decision to discontinue the Courier in 1982. The truck faced declining sales and profitability, and Ford chose to focus its resources on other vehicle segments where it could achieve greater success. While the Ford Courier had its strengths, such as being compact and relatively affordable, it struggled to compete effectively in a rapidly evolving market dominated by strong competitors. These factors contributed to its lack of significant success and eventual discontinuation. The Dodge Ram Charger, produced from 1974 to 1993, faced several challenges that impacted its success in the marketplace. Competition in the SUV market, the Dodge Ram Charger competed in a crowded SUV market facing stiff competition from other manufacturers such as Chevrolet. LA. These competitors offered strong brand loyalty, well-established reputations, and a wider range of model options, making it challenging for the Ram Charger to stand out. During the 1970s and 1980s, there were significant fluctuations in fuel prices with periods of high fuel prices prompting consumers to seek more fuel efficient vehicles. The Dodge Ram Charger being a large and relatively fuel thirsty SUV may have struggled to appeal to consumers during times of high fuel prices impacting its sales. Dodge Ram Charger was known for its ruggedness and off-road capability, but it was criticized for its rough ride and poor handling characteristics, especially on paved roads. This may have deterred some buyers who prioritize comfort and drivability for everyday use. For its nearly two decade long production run, the Dodge Ram Charger received relatively few updates and innovations compared to its competitors. This lack of significant changes may have made the Ram Charger seem outdated or less appealing to consumers looking for the latest features and advancements, brand perception, Dodge may have struggled with brand perception issues during certain periods of the Ram Charger's production run. While Dodge had a strong reputation for producing trucks, some consumers uh, may have viewed other manufacturers' SUVs as more reliable or better suited to their needs. The automotive market experienced significant shifts in consumer preferences during the Ram Charger's production run. Changes in lifestyle trends, such as the growing popularity of minivans and later subsidy with more car-like characteristics, may have impacted the demand for traditional body-on-frame SUVs like the Ram Charger. Ultimately, Dodge made the decision to discontinue the Ram Charger in 1993. Declining sales, changing market conditions, and shifting consumer preferences likely influenced the decision. While the Dodge Ram Charger had its strengths, including rugged off-road capability and towing capacity, it faced tough competition, changing market conditions, and evolving consumer preferences throughout its production run, ultimately impacting its success in the marketplace. Uh, the Chevrolet El Camino, produced from 1978 to 1987, faced several challenges that impacted its success in the market. Shift in consumer preferences uh, during the late 1970s and 1980s, there was a shift in consumer preferences away from traditional body on frame cars and trucks towards more fuel efficient and versatile vehicles. The Chevrolet El Camino being a combination of a car and a pickup truck did not fit neatly into either category, making it less appealing to consumers who were increasingly interested in fuel efficiency and practicality. As the El Camino faced tough competition from other vehicles in the market, including both traditional pickup trucks and car-based utility vehicles like minivans. These competitors offered a wider range of options and configurations to suit different consumer needs, making it difficult for the El Camino to stand out. Design and styling of the El Camino, which attempted to blend the features of a car and a truck did not resonate with all consumers. Some found the design to be unconventional or outdated, especially compared to other vehicles available at the time. Uh, during this in Quamets and Quali. During the late 1970s and early 1980s, 
uh, the automotive industry faced challenges related to fuel economy regulations and quality control. This led to a decline in performance and overall build quality for many vehicles, including the El Camino. Issues such as reduced engine power, reliability concerns, and lower quality materials may have affected the El Camino's reputation among consumers. Limited updates and innovations, the El Camino received relatively few updates and innovations throughout its production run from 1978 to 1987. This lack of significant changes may have made the vehicle seem outdated or less appealing to consumers looking for the latest features and advancements. Economic factors, including fluctuations in fuel prices and changes in consumer spending habits, also played a role in the uh, Camino's lack of success. Economic downturns and periods of high fuel prices may have deterred consumers from purchasing vehicles like the El Camino, which were perceived as less fuel efficient and practical. Ultimately, Chevrolet made the decision to discontinue the El Camino in 1987. Due to declining sales and changing market conditions, uh, the vehicle faced challenges in attracting buyers and maintaining profitability, uh, leading to its eventual discontinuation. While the Chevrolet El Camino had its strengths, including its unique design and versatility, it faced tough competition, changing consumer preferences, and economic challenges that impacted its success in the market during its production run from 1978 to 1987. The GMC Sprint, produced from 1971 to 1977, was a variant of the Chevrolet El Camino and belonged to the coupe utility vehicle category, combining elements of both cars and trucks. For something like the Chevrolet El Camino, uh, the GMC Sprint was built on the same platform as the Chevrolet Chevelle. This platform shared components with other GM vehicles of the era, contributing to economies of scale in production. The design of the GMC Sprint closely mirrored that of the Chevrolet EL Camino, featuring a similar body style with a car-like front end and a cargo bed integrated into the rear. It was available in both regular and luxury trim levels, offering buyers options for customization and comfort. The GMC Sprint was offered with a range of engine options, including inline six and V engines. These engines varied in displacement and power output, providing buyers with choices to suit their performance preferences and needs. Like its Chevrolet counterpart, the GMC Sprint offered practical hauling capabilities with its cargo bed. While not as spacious or rugged as traditional pickup trucks, it provided sufficient space for transporting light loads, equipment, or recreational gear. The GMC Sprint was positioned as a more upscale and premium alternative to the Chevrolet El Camino. It targeted buyers looking for a combination of style, comfort, and utility in a single vehicle. And popular, despite its unique design and features, the GMC Sprint did not achieve significant success in the market. Uh, sales numbers, were relatively modest compared to other vehicles in its segment, and it faced stiff competition from both traditional pickup trucks and car-based utility vehicles. Uh, discontinue, uh, production of the GMC Sprint ended in 1977, along with the Chevrolet El Camino. Shifting market dynamics, changing consumer preferences, and declining sales likely contributed to the decision to discontinue the model. While not as well known or sought after as, as some other classic vehicles from the era, the GMC Speed Sprint has gained a following among enthusiasts and collectors. Its unique design, association with the Chevrolet El Camino, and limited production numbers contribute to its appeal among vintage car enthusiasts. Overall, the GMC Sprint represents an interesting chapter in automotive history, offering a blend of style, comfort, and utility in a single vehicle. Despite its limited success in the market, it remains a noteworthy example of the coupe utility concept popularized during the 1970s. Uh, the Jeep Poncho was a trim package offered on the Jeep Gladiator pickup truck produced by American Motors Corporation from 1976 to 1983. It was marketed as a sporty and rugged variant of the Jeep Gladiator featuring distinctive styling cues and additional features. The Jeep Ancho featured a bold and eye-catching appearance characterized by its unique graphics, bold striping, and colorful accents. It was available in various vibrant color combinations, often with contrasting stripes and decals, giving it a distinctive and sporty look. Trim Packets, the Ancho trim package, added several features and upgrades to the standard Jeep Gladiator. These included upgraded interior trim, special badging, chrome bumpers, wheel trim rings, and a variety of exterior graphics and decals. The package was available on both two-door and four-door Gladiator models. The Jeep Poncho was offered with a range of engine options, including inline six and V engines. These engines varied in displacement and power output, providing buyers with choices to suit their performance preferences and needs. Like other Jeep vehicles of the era, the Honcho boasted impressive off-road capability, 
It was equipped with rugged four wheel drive system, solid axles and durable suspension components, allowing it to tackle challenging terrain with ease. Polari Jeep Poncho gained a dedicated following uh, among enthusiasts who appreciated its unique styling and off-road prowess. It appealed to buyers seeking a combination of ruggedness, versatility, and style in a pickup truck. Um, despite its popularity, the Jeep Honcho was produced in relatively limited numbers compared to other pickup trucks of the era. Its niche appeal and specialized trim package likely contributed to its limited production run. Uh, production of the Jeep Honcho ended in 1983 along with the Jeep Gladiator pickup truck, changing market dynamics, evolving consumer preferences, and the introduction of newer truck models likely influenced the decision to discontinue the Ancho. The Jeep Ancho remains a sought after collectible among Jeep enthusiasts and collectors. Its distinctive styling, unique trim package, and association with the Jeep brand contribute to its appeal as a classic and iconic pickup truck from the 1970s and 1980s. Overall, the Jeep Ancho stands out as a memorable and distinctive variant of the Jeep Gladiator pickup truck, offering a blend of style, performance, and off-road capability that continues to resonate with enthusiasts today. The Air National Harvester Scout Terra, produced from 1976 to 1980, faced several challenges that impacted its success in the market, competition from established brands. Um, the Scout Terra competed in a market dominated by well-established brands such as Ford, Chevrolet, and Dodge. These competitors had strong brand loyalty and a wider dealership network making it challenging for the Scout Terra to gain significant market share. Limited model offerings, the Scout Terra was primarily offered as a two-door, short wheelbase model with limited configuration options. This limited the appeal of the vehicle to buyers seeking more customization and versatility, especially compared to competitors offering a wider range of body styles and configurations. Uh, International Harvester had a reputation for producing durable, and rugged vehicles, but the Scout Terra faced some reliability issues and quality control problems during its production run. These issues may have affected consumer confidence in the vehicle and led to concerns about long-term ownership costs. Scout Terra, like many SUVs and trucks of its era, uh, was not known for its fuel efficiency. Around the late 1970s and early 1980s, rising fuel prices and increased awareness of environmental issues led some consumers to prioritize fuel economy when purchasing vehicles, which may have impacted the Scout Terra's sales. Economic factors, including inflation and recession, impacted the automotive industry during the late 1970s and early 1980s. These economic challenges may have affected consumer spending habits and deterred some buyers from purchasing larger vehicles like the Scout Terra. Internet marketing and advertising. Uh, International Harvester had a smaller marketing budget compared to larger automakers, which limited its ability to promote the Scout Terra effectively. This may have resulted in lower brand awareness and fewer sales opportunities compared to competitors with larger advertising campaigns. Discontinued so production of the Scout Terra ended in 1980, along with other International Harvester Scout models. Declining sales, changing market conditions, and shifting consumer preferences likely influenced the decision to discontinue the vehicle. Overall, while the International Harvester Scout Terra had its strengths, including durability and off-road capability, it faced tough competition, reliability concerns, and economic challenges that impacted its success in the market during its production run from 1976. In conclusion, each of the pickup trucks discussed faced its own set of challenges that hindered its success in the market during the 1970s. Whether it was competition from established brands, reliability concerns, fuel efficiency issues, or changing consumer preferences, these factors played a significant role in shaping the fate of these vehicles. Despite their shortcomings, these pickup trucks remain important chapters in automotive history. They represent the diversity of offerings in the market during the 1970s and serve as reminders of the era's economic, social, and technological landscape. While some of these trucks may not have achieved the commercial success their manufacturers had hoped for, they have nevertheless left lasting impressions on enthusiasts and collectors. Today, they are valued for their uniqueness, historical significance, and contributions to the rich tapestry of automotive culture. As we reflect on the successes and failures of these pickup trucks, we gain insights into the complexities of the automotive industry and the ever-evolving